Hey everybody, welcome to Faith with Katie. I'm Katie Souza, and he's back. That's right, David Herzog is on set. And now, I'm telling you, we thought we weren't gonna make this live broadcast because we were laughing so hard, but it's going to be an amazing show because the glory is here and the teaching is gonna be amazing and awesome. So, share the broadcast, everybody. Share the broadcast right now. I know you're chatting on live and I wanna welcome everybody that's getting on right now. I see people from all over the world and my regulars. I wanna thank you, regulars. I see your names coming up all the time, every week. You guys are faithful to watch this broadcast. I love you. You know, I'm gonna probably try to arrange something to give to my regulars, so keep watching so that we can bless you in some shape or form. We'll figure out what it is and we'll let you know. Okay, look, <clears throat> David, <laughs> he's here already. He's gonna be up on board. We're gonna talk about all kinds of amazing things and we're gonna to minister to you. So again, share the broadcast. Get on My Faith TV on Facebook. Also get on Katie Sue's on Facebook. And if, if you're just watching on your TV, be a Faith Television Network, that's the way that you join the chat. And in the chat, please everybody, please say where you're watching from and give David and I a big shout out. All right, so as we go into the broadcast today, let's start with our selfie miracle testimony video. It's a great one, check it out. Anna. What happened, Anna? Um, I believe I was healed from dry eyes and floaters. And f dry eye and floaters. And my vision, loss of vision blur. And loss of vision blur, is your vision bl blurry right now? No. How's the floaters? I can't find them. Can't find them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, God is on the move, guys. You need to put your faith on, even if it doesn't appear like God is doing anything, that of the increase of his government and of his peace, there is no end. That's Isaiah. So even while you're sleeping, the Bible says that when we plant seed in the ground, that while we sleep, though we know not how, that seed, uh, it, it gets planted, it breaks forth, it germinates, it sprouts, and it produces fruit. So God's always on the move. Put your faith on that when you think nothing is happening so that you know God loves you so much that he's going to make sure you're always being propelled forward. Just try to get yourself in agreement with what he's doing. Amen? Now, if you had a miracle, don't forget. I need those testimonies, guys. Send them to me. Get your phone up. Put it in the landscape position like this so we can air it on TV. And tell me your story. Tell me what you had. Tell me what you were suffering from. Tell me what the doctor said about it. And then tell me what happened when Jesus touched you in the meeting or on this broadcast or when you listened to one of our, pro uh, our products. And then send it to selfies at katiesouza.com. That's selfies at katiesouza.com. I'm hoping you're sharing the broadcast right now. Thanks for chatting in, guys. Uh, I see the chats are already getting really busy. Okay, don't forget Faith Now. Okay, we're going to be expanding even more networks are going to come on Faith Now. So you're going to have so many choices for $1.99 a month. And when you do the $1.99 a month, you get Katie TV, you get Sid Roth, his network, you get Victory TV, you get so much more, and it helps me with our prison ministry. Remember, I support, this ministry supports 4,000 prisons. That's a lot of peeps, and we're going back in now. <clears throat> We've been uh, really working it to where now the prisons are getting opened, and we're going to be able to go back in. We're going to have footage. We're going to pray for people on death row. It's going to be awesome. We're going to see miracles manifest. So we're super excited that we get to go back in, but it takes money for us to go back in. So get on faith now, okay? Come to my page, support the ministry. Do whatever you can, become a partner with us. Become one of my partner mentors. You can do faith now by going to faithnow.net and sign up for the monthly agreement and just put in KDTV, you get a month for free. Okay, and then part of that money goes to just operating the, the, the network and the app and part of it goes to our outreaches. So make good, you guys, and get your Faith Now app so that you can get all the blessings and still be a blessing to us. All right, we're gonna bring you on board now. It's David Herzog, welcome him, welcome him to the broadcast.
Okay, guys. Hey, David's here, and thanks for coming back. Great to be back again. I know it's quite a trip to get here. It's amazing. I'm here again. I feel like I was just here because we did. You, some of you watched the, the show we did a few yep. weeks ago, mm -hmm. but it almost feels like there's only like 15 minutes between the two shows when actually you're watching us now. And then the other show you watched us like three weeks ago or a month ago. Yeah, and they need to go back. They need to. You guys need to go back and look at that show because man, we were talking about the glory. I mean, people were in the chat while it's they like, were like watching that travel. show. It was incredible. They were saying, "This is an amazing teaching. This is awesome. This was incredible." I mean, people were getting super blessed because David was uh, talking about how to get in the glory, the steps, practical steps to how you can position yourself to get there. So go back and look at that broadcast. Uh, so I'm glad you came back. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad I'm back. Yeah. It almost feel like I didn't have to drive here a second time, like as if I was always here the whole time. <laughs> Amazing. Next time we'll set up a cot for you. A month has you. gone by, but it's like I was here the whole time. Yeah, and we're going to set up a cot for you. There we'll you get you your own dressing room with a cot and all that. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. that's good. Okay. Bring Stephanie, though, so she can hang out, too. There you go. She'll love okay. the cot. Yeah, right. Okay, so look, um, <clears throat> you guys are moving and grooving in glory and miracles all the time. Tell some miracle stories. All right, um, we saw someone grow taller. We were in Israel yep. in a big conference. There's like 2,500 people, pie auditorium, seats 3,000, preaching with this prophet named Savaraj, something from India. And I did my session and I started calling out miracles. And these people grew taller. Right. Like taller. Like, like, like not, a not, lot. Not taller. an inch. Like you. Right. And they were, it's funny because it they were mostly Chinese people flying into Israel for this conference. And these Chinese people grew really tall, this too. Everyone really? was freaked out. They came on the stage or crying. And then oh the Israeli gosh. soldiers asked me that were guarding the thing, hey, we need to talk to you. So I thought I got in trouble or I said something <laughs> wrong. And they look around, they go, can we pray for you? Can you pray for us for something else? <laughs> we want to be tall. I said, well, it's Jesus, Yeshua, you know, you're you sure? Yeah, we're Jewish, but we don't care. We saw that that's real. Wow. We, we want you. So they don't care. Once they know it's real, they don't care what it is. See, so guys, you, you know, you think that God doesn't want to do a miracle through you. But maybe he wants to do a miracle through you for someone so that somebody else that would never believe that needs a miracle and is watching that would completely shift their mind and come to Christ and believe that he Man. could do something for them too. There's so many reasons why God would do a miracle. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, we saw people in the Bible that Jesus would do miracles for people and, and, and then they would believe totally. the, the man born blind. And, you know, afterwards he, he got persecuted by the Pharisees. He got brought into the temple and they're like, well, wait a minute, you know, how did this guy pray for you? How did, how did you see again? And he goes, I already told you a million times how it happened. Yes. And then afterwards he came out and he said, he, he, you know, Jesus was talking to him and he said, tell me who, who you are, Lord, and I will believe. And he goes, do you believe on the Son of Man? And he goes, yes, I believe. So the miracle made him believe. Yeah. We've also seen time reversal miracles where a body part goes back in time, like 30 years. Yeah, wow. So I'm in Nebraska and the Lord said to me, in heaven there's no time, right? I go, yeah. Lord, I preach on that. Well, there's a man here about in his 70s. He's had several heart attacks, stints, surgeries. Command his heart to go back 30 years. Wow. So I just declare it, not knowing who it is. Yep. Then I asked them to check, you know, is there anyone here? And this man comes up. He had, it was him, 72 years old, heart surgeries, even had scars. Yep. Not only was he healed, he didn't feel the stints in his heart. He opened his shirt up and all the cuts from the surgeries were gone. What? And I, and I said, Lord, 30 come years on. back, and that was right a few years before he ever had heart problems. So it's like, time, like the sun stood still with Joshua. Yeah. So time reversals. Because so how you do it is you go in the glory realm, as we talked yep. about last show. Now you're in the timeless realm. Yep. And then once you're there, you, you, have, you have time travel. You know, you can command things to come back and forth because you're in a timeless realm. And right. In my book, Limitless Glory, actually talks about that. Limitless Glory. I don't even know if we have a graphic for that, but if we do, we should put it up. Because, you know, I totally operate in that realm of, of time travel. There it is. Yeah, there it is right there. Go, go get it, guys. DavidHerzogStore.com. Get your copy, Limitless Glory. Because this whole thing about... There being the ability to pause time, reverse time, go forward in time. It, it, it's in the scriptures. It is. And God wants us to operate in that way. You know, Jesus, it says that, you know, like the man with the crippled hand, he would say, he said, stretch forth thine hand, the withered hand. And it says the eye stretched forth and it was totally restored. Well, when you look at the language there, that word stretch forth, it's ectano. And it means to go back to the time something happened, the place it happened. And the cause that made it happen. Mm. So when Jesus said, stretch forth thine hand to that man, he was actually going back to the time the hand got withered, the place the hand wow, got withered, and the cause that made huh. the hand get withered, and it got healed back in time at the root. That's a good revelation. Yeah, I mean, it's really, yeah. This time thing is really 
Amazing. Talk more about what you have, like, in Limitless Glory. Um, Talk well, about that revelation. Well, like Ezekiel 37. Yeah. He commanded the bones to come together. So I didn't know this till <laughs> years ago, that you can actually command physical objects to do stuff. Wow, come on. Because uh, how do they, how do the, how can a bone or a table or your wallet you lost hear you? Right. Is it alive? So everything created has atoms, protons, neutrons. Inside that has sound waves. Wow. And the God put the sound in everything creation. Ooh. And that sound wave hears God's commands. Wow. And when you're in the glory and you repeat what he says, the sound wave in that object doesn't hear you. It hears God's voice. Wow. That's why God told Moses, speak to the rock. It'll turn to water. How does it turn to water? From the core, from the molecular core, sound wave turned to water in the inside out. Whoa. A tooth that was, uh, you know, messed up turns to gold from the inside out. Wow. A cancer, a cancer dies from the inside out. Speak to the tree. And he said, die. And it withered. Right. Uh, wind and waves. So everything created. Speak to the mountain. It'll be thrown yeah. into the sea. So Ezekiel 37, bones come together. Right. And the bones, and it knew even which bone to reconnect to. It had cellular memory. Right. Wow. And then the looking. Cellular memory. And then the looking realm is, now look, now look at it. And it is looking and then skin appears. So there's Whoa. the speaking and the looking. So you get in the glory realm. And so then we have this faith. I lost my wallet. I said, I know you can hear me because there's no distance in the glory. I know that. Right. I know you're made of atoms, protons, neutrons inside sound waves. Yeah. Even though it looks solid, there's still atoms, yeah. protons, and, I and I said, neutrons. Come in back. It. And I've had a watch come back from China back to Sedona that Whoa. was left in the hotel. I found my wallet reappear. Uh, floating axe head, Old Testament. Remember the Wait. floating axe yeah. head came back up. Wow. So, so this realm, when you have revelation with the glory, it's 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 an accelerator. If you go to heaven right now yeah. and you lost an arm, you'd have an arm when you get back. Right. If you were overweight, you'd be skinny. If you had a big cancer, the moment you got to heaven, you'd be healed, right? It wouldn't take five minutes. Right. Wow. So when heaven's glory comes here, that same speed, let your will be done on earth in my body as it would be had I just walked into heaven. Oh my That's God. That's what thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven means. How much debt would you have when you got to heaven? None. Zip. Zero. You left it for your spouse, maybe, right. but you're good. So get mm -hmm. life insurance or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, okay, this is real, guys. This is real. Okay, there is, we have to understand something. This Hebrews 1, th 1, 2, in the Amplified Classic, it says that Jesus is the lawful owner of all things, and he created the world, the reaches of space, and the ages of time. He built, operated, produced, and arranged them in order. So in, in the glory realm, all the ages of time are there. You know, the, the past, the future, the present. So when you ascend into the glory realm by worshiping God, by, by praising Him, by getting still and listening for Him, you can actually ascend into that place in the glory where you can access the past. You can go back to where Jesus said, you know, stretch forth thine hand, and He went back to the time the hand was, was withered, the place that got withered, and the cause that made it withered. Every location in space and time is in the glory realm. So when you, when you worship and you get up in the glory through your worship, you're going to be able to access all those things and go forward in time to bring your promises into your now go back in time to correct things that happened to you you know i found out that you can never change the event you can never stop that event from happening but you can go back and fix the consequences exactly. from that event exactly right just like someone gets healed of a past issue in their life and all the scars you go hit the root they get deliverance they get healed mm. and all of a sudden the the scars and their emotions are healed they don't have the the, the triggers they don't have the the event happened, but they don't have the results of it. Right, they don't, they don't have that, like you said, the triggers. All of a sudden, they'll think about that thing, that accident or that divorce or whatever, and they don't feel the same, like, pain. Exactly. They don't feel the same reaction. They don't get their buttons pushed. Exactly. When somebody talks to them about it anymore. Exactly. Because you've, we've actually gone back in time to where it happened to them. But even on Earth, time is interesting. So being transported physically, I've been transported driving my car. Yep. Linear time is eight hours across France from the north, e northwest to northeast. And we were worshiping the glory. We we're getting lighter and lighter. And in an hour and a half, we were at our destination. Yeah, wow. So, so let me show you that piece of paper here. Okay, go. How it works. So here, let's, yep. let's see this paper. Yep. Well, this is my car here. Yep. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Th those, those shoot you right here. Okay, this, this is my car right here. Yep. This is my destination. Yep. Eight hours. Right. But because we're here worshiping and glory is coming, glory, there's no time. Right. The timeless realm gets closer and closer to my car. Point A and point B starts to bend. Yeah, there you go. And all of a sudden, shoo, we're, there's no time. So God bends the time continuum in the glory. Right. So it happens at super speed. That's why the miracles happen super speed. The finances happen super speed. There's no time in the glory. So the time reverses over body parts, over like Philip being transported geographically. Yeah. 
or things that should be in your destiny that take 20 years is happening in the same year. Right. There's just an acceleration in that realm of time and space. Is that cool? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, Jesus ripped th through the fabric of space time. The fabric of space time is a real thing. Okay. Yeah. It's like this invisible fabric that we can't see. This has been proven by NASA by experiments with gravity probe B that this actually exists. And, but it acts like a giant trampoline, like, you know, weights of planets and stuff can bend bend it stretch it yeah. you know and all that and and when that happens then time can collapse time can reduce you know when like you just said you just showed the bending of the fabric of space time you know and jesus already went through the fabric for us that's why it says on when he died on the cross for well, the joy set before him the, yeah that right the curtain which is what's the curtain made out of fabric was ripped from the top to the bottom yeah so i mean he's given us the right to be able to bend space time and to be able to shorten time, to accelerate time. I mean, look, Hezekiah, time went backwards. 10 steps on the sundial of Ahaz. Uh, what happened when Joshua, he said, sun stand still in the midst of heaven, moon stay in the valley, uh, valley of Ajalon, and the sun stood still and moon stayed until Joshua took revenge on all his enemies. A lot of times God gives us mastery over time so that we can take revenge over our enemies. Well, we're seated to heavenly places, right? So if you go to your heavenly seat and sit there and then pray and decree, you're above time. Right, right. But you have That's to get good. up there or else you're, then you're bound. You're not in that realm. You get above time and now there's a time, you know, and then when the people say, well, when did Jesus die on the cross? So we say 2,000 years ago. But then the Bible says, uh, by uh, before the foundations of the earth, he was slain. Well, right. That would be before Genesis. But then when the prophets saw mm. by his stripes we were healed, he saw that thousands of years before the cross. Mm. So time on earth is not, we, it's, we think it's linear. Heaven is circular. Jesus goes to, about to go to the cross and he goes, Oh, for the joy set before him, he, as if he had already been there, he, he rejoiced. He already right. saw the outcome. Wow. He knows the end from the beginning. It's true. It's true. And we have to understand something. It's like God has done this. Jesus has given us the ability to do this by ripping the fabric of space time so that we can see all the provision that God has for us and we can see the miracles that God has for us. Okay, so, you know, I want to go back to like um, Hezekiah. And the time going, the sun going backwards 10 steps on the sundial of Ahaz, it said. Why is that important? The sundials, there was a lot of sundials in Jerusalem at that time. That's how people told time. Around the world, yeah. Right. So now Ahaz, his father, had, it's Hezekiah's father, Ahaz, he had built a sundial. So it was called the sundial of Ahaz. And why was God saying, you know, the sun's going to go back 10 steps on the sundial of Ahaz because Ahaz was a big, huge idolater. Yeah. And so that it created problems in the future for Hezekiah. In fact, the first thing Hezekiah did when he became king was he cleaned out all the idols and all the altars. But God was, and then he got sick himself and then he got attacked by the Assyrian army and all this other stuff. And God was saying, this is a miracle. I'm going to give you 50 more years of life. I'm going to destroy the Assyrian king yeah. and I'm going to save Jerusalem. And this is going to be the sign. The sign is that I'm going to go back 10 steps. The sunlight's going to go back 10 steps on the sun of Ahaz. Meaning I'm going to go back on your bloodline. Go back in time on your bloodline. Hezekiah, to where your father opened up the door to these attacks, to this sickness that's on you, yeah. to this assault on Jerusalem through his sin, through his idolatry. And a lot of you right now are dealing with stuff that's generational. It happened, your parents started it. And you're dealing with the repercussions and the consequences right now. But if you understand this precept about being able to go into the glory and where all time and space is available to you, and you can go back anywhere in time and, and space to a place where something started in your bloodline, then you can wipe it out. I had that happen to me too. I actually had my legs start shrinking down. I was losing all my muscle tone, and I was like, what is this guy? And he goes, go back in time on the sundial of your parents because mm -hmm. that's where your limbs started getting decimated. So I started researching it, and I looked up, in, and I think it's in... Um, Chronicles or Kings, it says that it went back, the shadow went back 10 huh. steps. That word shadow means decimated limbs. Wow. Decimated limbs. So when I went back, I came to the root, got, I saw it, I applied the blood of Jesus to it, and then from that moment on, my legs started growing in diameter an inch every month. Wow. Three inches I've gained so far without even working out or anything. Well, uh, part of what you said, interesting about Hezekiah, is there's another part to that. How did he get to the point where God granted him his wish to live longer mm. and the lord showed me the revelation on that so there was idolatry he yep. destroyed the 
pagan altars, yeah. but then he rebuilt the godly altars. Yes. Secondly, yeah. here's a big one right here. He restored the feasts of Israel. Wow. The feasts That's are, right. The feasts are God's way of keeping you in his timing. Yes. So when you don't celebrate the feast, we're out of time. And so he said, and one of the seven blessings on most of the feasts yeah. is long life. You know, there's an angel goes before you, there, there's provision, there's debt, there, I'll, I'll take sickness from you, and I will in yeah. long life. So he basically claimed, he said, Lord, hey, I destroyed the pagan altars. He said, you're gonna die. The Lord told him, you're gonna die. And he negotiated, he goes, wait, Lord, I, I restored the, the feast. I yeah. got rid of the pagan altars. In yeah. the feast is long life. That's one of the promises from God. Uh, so he on. claimed that Come basically, because he said, I restored the feast back. Come on. And so I'm supposed to have long life. And all of a sudden God shifted and it goes, okay, 15 more years. Wow. So so, you, so he got into, so the feast is God's way of keeping us in heaven's time. People say, well, what is that? So in heaven, I found out when I was during the feast, I was laying out in the spirit, I got taken to heaven. Yeah. And I saw the pageantry in heaven during the feast was totally different wow. than normal times. So when you stop, let's say Passover, Pentecost, wow. Feast Tabernacles, you stop and take that week and be with the Lord and gather God's people, you actually are syncing with what's going on specifically at that time in heaven. Oh, so you wow. get the download of all the blessings, all the gifts, all the glory. You miss the feast, you miss the next six months of your life because that's the direction yeah. for the next season. So if you miss the feast, they were agricultural, they were farmers, right? Yeah. They said, if you do this, go to the feast, give the offering, worship me, hear the word, you'll have rain, which means you'll have prosperity in your ministry, your business. Your, if, you don't, if you don't have rain, there's no crops, there's no food. So, wow. so you go through dry seasons when you don't hit the, so that's also redeeming the time. See, I had no idea, uh, first of all, that the, there was pageantry like in heaven, specifically on the feast days. Mm -hmm. So heaven is massively celebrating the feast. And that's why he says, do it, because I want you to sync with what I'm doing in heaven at that specific time. And when you sync, guys, when you sync with heaven, what are you doing? You're, you're tapping into the fact that, you know, Jesus created all the reaches of space and the ages of time. So you can tap into any time. You can go in the future. If you're in syncing with heaven's time, and that's one of the ways to do it is through the feast, right? That means that you can tap into going into the future. And grabbing something that wouldn't ha normally happen exactly. for a year, five years, ten years, whatever, and bringing it back into your now. I've done that before. Yeah, well, it, and even in Zechariah, when the Lord returns after the tribulation, after all that, the, the thousand year reign, it says every nation will have to come back to Jerusalem, celebrate the Feast of Booths. So you think, well, that, so that shows you it's not just a Jewish thing for just Jewish people. It's not just Old Testament. He says, keep the feast now and in the future, it's going to be eternal. Even the Gentile nations will have to come up to celebrate. But the difference is he'll be the reason for the season. It's Jesus. Wow, come on. Even Passover, it's celebrate well, it's, Jesus as our lamb. Yeah, I mean, all, it's all foreshadowing of Christ. Exactly. The Old Testament feasts all foreshadowed everything Christ would do. And you're in time. Yeah. And you're in God's time. So sometimes right. you feel like you're getting behind in things in your life. Celebrate the feast, you'll get catch up. Realign. You'll be in time. Realign. And also, those who eat my flesh, drink my blood, shall never die. There's yeah. a level of it where the, you're unkillable until the Lord allows you. Like Paul, right. they couldn't kill him. John, Island of Patmos couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill them unless it was the time. Right. And even if you're going to go, you can be so close to God, you can have a negotiation with the Lord like Hezekiah. Paul wrote, should I stay or should I go? I think it's better for you that I stay, but I'd rather go. Basically, he had an option. God was saying, you've done what I told you. Would you want to come home now or do you right. want to stay? Right. So even death, there's no fear. You could be unkillable in the last days, or you could choose if the Lord allows you, hey, do you think it's your time to go? Right. That's the relationship we have with him. Okay, so now look, I know that we didn't agree on this, but since we're talking about the feast, <laughs> then we need to talk about the Passover glory event. Let's do it. Don't you think? Okay, look, so we're going to throw this up. Did you hear what David just said? One of the ways to tap into this realm of being able to do like Jesus, stretch forth thine hand, and he went back to the time the hand got withered, the place it got withered, and the cause, the accident or whatever disease that made it get withered. The one of the ways to tap into that is by celebrating the feast, because you get in heaven's time, and in heaven that you have access. Access to go backward in time, forward in time, all the above. So we weren't going to mention this, but you know, David is having this amazing Passover glory celebration. April 14th through the 17th. It starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow, right, guys? Yes. That's correct. Okay, it starts tomorrow. You still have time to get there. If you're local, get there, okay? And if you're not, if you're overseas or whatever, I know a lot of you are chatting online from overseas, there's going to be a link, correct? Yes. To watch. What do they do? Do they go to thegloryzone.org to get the link? Thegloryzone.org, and then you can register right there. Okay, so look. TheGloryZone.org. You can either register to go there in person, which is the better option if you can't, please. Go. 
be, get in the glory. Okay, but if not, there's a link on the website. There is a link on the website for you to watch this entire conference. Celebrate the feast because you're going to tap into this realm of control over time and space. I mean, look, Joshua's commanded, sun stand still. You know, moon stay in the valley of Ashland, and the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until Joshua took revenge on all his enemies. God has given man the power to operate in this because of what Christ has done for us on the cross. Exactly. So, so you know, Satan changes times and seasons, right? Yeah, he does. So you notice, even the police departments will tell you when there's a full moon, there's much more drama. There's there's fight. There's oh there's, yeah. There, there's domestic violence. All this. And People or, go to the emergency or, room. Or Halloween, you could sense. Oh, it feels dark. Yep. Or winter solstice as they celebrate all these. Pagan. Yeah, yeah. But when you celebrate God's feast, you're not under the power and you don't feel the influence of those pagan feasts. Yes, come but on. But when you're not doing God's feast and you're not doing anything, you can you can get moved at times and feel bothered in certain days or angry and agitated. But you stay under God's timings, which is the feast. It's his sundial, basically. Yep. You're not moved by the demonic stuff. Well, it's like you recalibrate, right? You're yeah. recalibrating. Guys, if you feel like you're out of calibration, if you're out of timing, if you're not in the flow of God and you need to get recalibrated, you definitely need to tune in tomorrow or show up at the conference. You know, um, for me, I've had so many miracles by operating this. Let's talk about practical ways. You said the feast first. Yeah. You, if you get in the feast, you're going you're gonna to unite with heaven's timing. Yeah. What else? For me, it's been worship and things like that. What about you? Um, fasting can also do it because fasting... It's basically the first sin of Adam and Eve was with food. Right. So you go into the root of that and you're fasting. Come on. It sensitizes your spirit man to suddenly see and hear what God was trying to get you all along. Yeah. It's not like, oh, he feels sorry for you that you fasted, you're hungry, yeah. you're weak, so I'll, I'll answer your prayer. Yeah. No, he was already giving it to you, but you couldn't see it to receive it. And when you fast wow. and pray, you get out of your flesh and all of a sudden you get sharper and sharper in the spirit and you see crystal clear, yeah. you get dreams, your sensitivity is higher and you can just grab it. Wow. So fasting is also a way to speed up the time. Well, think about it, guys. Okay, so like in the garden, before they sinned and ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what was it? It was, there was, they were in an immortal, eternal state. There was no time. They weren't aging. There, there was no, there was no linear time as we know it now when they sinned and ate that fruit they fell out of that eternal state into this linear time and they began to creep forward in time aging and getting closer and closer to death as it went so that's totally uh, resonates with me well when you get older a lot of times your mental capacities in the natural or you forget things but you can reverse that so daniel did something unique. Yeah. He did a Daniel fast. He called it after himself. No, we called it after him. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Call, right. David Herzog right. fast. Daniel fast, right. And, <laughs> and he didn't eat he, he had vegetables, he ate meat for three weeks. He, yeah. just, he did a vegan fast basically. Yeah. And he, what happened is he his IQ went up ten times. He was smarter than even the highest ten, level. It says, but it says ten times yeah. in all areas wow. of, of the arts, wow. of math, wow. of, of not just the Bible, like of everything. Everything. So his IQ literally jumped. Come on. Ten times. He didn't study ten times harder. That's how King Solomon had the. He was the smartest man face of the earth. Come on. That your IQ and your mental abilities to yep. to, to pick up things, discern, and when you're little, you pick up language is really easy. Yep. When you're older, it's much harder to learn a language or learn something like that because a part of your brain just kind of shuts down yep. and you kind of go on autopilot as you get older. Right. When you're young, you're a sponge. Right? Right. Yeah. That could be reversed. What Daniel did when you're in the glory, and you'd say you do, you add a little fast to it for a season. It could reset your cells in your body. Yeah. Reset your blood. So there's there's a reset. Resets time reversal over your body. Right. There's actually time reversals. We've seen bald people grow hair. We've seen white hair completely white in the meeting turn back to their original color black. That's going back in time. That's yeah. So time reversal over youth. body parts. Over, right. So so that's part of it. But age, he renews your youth. Yep. Like the eagles. Yes. Not the bald eagles, because that would be fun. But, right. <laughs> but, but there's other eagles that are bald. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sure, it's the same thing with what happened with my legs. You know, um, that word shadow, the, the sunlight went back 10 steps, or ten, the shadow of the sunlight went back 10 steps on the sundial of Ahaz. And um, he got 15 more years of life. Wow. Who knows? You know, it's like maybe it's not just 15 more years years in the future but maybe it's 15 more years while you're going back your physical body's going back 15 yeah. years yeah because you should have died that week and you lay, stayed longer yeah right i mean here i was my legs were growing back to where they were when i was younger wow 
So that's a restoring, yeah. you know, uh, that's totally. uh, your flesh will become fresher than a child's and you'll return, return, go back to the days of your youth. Well, you're tapping into the, the well, the body. When you take communion, you always say, Lord, I take, I, I tell him, I take on your resurrection power. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead dwells yeah. in my mortal mm, body. Mm. So every time I take it, I say, Lord, reactivate the resurrection of the Lord. Whoa. And so that's where he goes, Th then those who eat my flesh, drink my blood shall yeah. not die. Yeah. I don't mean, I mean people are dying, but you're unkillable or the enemy can't take you out before the time. Right, if right. You're, you're, you're continue regenerating. And even, even Paul probably died when they stoned him, he comes back up. John, yeah, right. I, I, I mean, he's, that, he's sort of boiled him like a french fry. The hottest oils. Yeah, they, right. they put him in there. And he didn't die. And he's like, oh, this is a nice bath. Where's the bubble? Yeah. Is it my birthday? Thank come you. Come on, come on. They had to <laughs> stick him out on an island in the middle of nowhere or to Daniel kill him. Daniel in the lion's den. To... Abbott, we should have been to go in the fire. Right. They were literally unkillable. But the guards died immediately with the flames. Yeah, right. And they were put in. So there's a level of the supernatural, even in this glory realm, you could become unkillable. And then we're in the last days. And there's a scripture that says, pray that you may be kind of worthy to escape all these things coming in the, in the last days. Wow. Pestilence persecution, martyrdom. Yeah, you know, right. Now, some are called to be martyrs, but not all are. And some, the devil's right. just going to try to take out before their time, uh, um, whatever it is. So you, even having faith to not die up until the Lord's return. Yeah, you know, the uh, Psalm, I, I like is Psalm 90, um, 92 or 90. Let me look if it's 92 or 94. I want to make sure. sure. But it, it, it's, it's crazy awesome because it basically says... All the stuff that you're saying, it says, this is uh, 92 verse 12, the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, be long lived. There you go. Stately, upright, meaning they're not going to be bent over, creeping around. They're <laughs> going to be useful, meaning, you know, you're going to do your own laundry and, and clean your own house and take your own bath when you're 90, 100 years old. You're going to be fruitful. You'll grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic, stable, durable, there you go. meaning you're going to fall down and you're not going to break your hip or your knee or Amen. whatever. You're going to be incorruptible, meaning your cells are incorruptible. They resist. They resist sickness. They resist COVID and all this it's other like stuff. It's almost like you're tapping into your new body, you know, your heavenly body that you're going to yeah. get later. Yeah. You're almost like getting a little down payment of that. Yeah, I, I would think, I, I think it's true. I think, you know, it says in this, it says that you shall bring forth fruit in old age. That's good. Come on. You know, guys, look, we have to start believing for this. I, I, I'm... My faith is that, I, at this more, and, and this is at the very basic level of my faith, is that I'm going to live long, strong, and leave a good-looking corpse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so like 90s still look hot and still be energetic, and if God wants to take me then because I'm done with my assignment, amen. And if it's not, then I'll live another 20, 30, 40 years. Who knows? No, I heard you say when you're in your 90s, when you retire, you're going to be running on the beach with a pink bathing suit. Oh! You, you said that in Franklin, oh, Tennessee. Oh, no. That was hilarious. Yes, I did. The point was, I'm going to be young. You know? Yes, well, the hubby had this wrong doctrine. I'll be honest with you. He he said, I have a dream that we're going to be hobbling down the beach with gray, gray hair, holding hands into the sunset. And I said, get behind me, Satan. I said, you can hobble down the beach all you want. I'm going to run down the beach in a hot pink bikini, <laughs> hair braided like Bo Derek. Okay, but it's like, yeah, I, I changed my hub's doctrine on that because, uh, no, I ain't going out like that. So thank you, Jesus. And the glory and, and, and tapping into this time travel to be able to tap into the realms of time yeah. is a big part of that. I mean, Hezekiah had 15 more years of life and he was dying at that moment. Exactly. He was dying. So he, the death was taken off of him. He got elongated life, and for all we know, he got regeneration where he was actually physically in his genes, in his genome, he was 15 years younger. That's amazing. Yeah, come on, right? Reset your DNA code. Reset your DNA. I mean, okay, guys, how many of you feel like you need to reset your DNA code? Chat in right now because I, I know we're only through like, you know, a little bit more than half the show, but I'd like to minister to people right now about the ability for anything that's in their bloodline. Perfect. Like, like Ahaz. It says mm -hmm. the sunlight went back on the sundial of Ahaz. That's Hezekiah's father who was a, a, an idolater. He was sinful. He brought trouble onto Ahaz. But, I mean, onto Hezekiah. But, but we're gonna, when we do that, um, there's twofold the Lord showed me. Okay. So one of them is you break generational curses, right? Yep. You break, and then, but a lot of people don't do is they don't go back down and release generational blessings. 
Come on. So this has to do with time as well. So yep. Let's say your great grandfather was mm -hmm. a, was a super rich guy. Another one knew twelve languages. Another one yeah. had gifts of business. Those are sleeper cells in your bloodline. And a lot of times, I've seen people that are complete drug addicts. They get saved, and suddenly they had leadership skills. They know languages. They're, they're good with the finances. They never were. It was the gift was there, but it wasn't liberated because mm. the curse broke it down. So what happens wow. is they get free. You break your your the curses, so they're not pulling on you. But then you liberate the generational blessings. Come on. One of the proofs of this is that. This, like for instance in the blood there's memory right in your bloodline yeah 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 but we always think of sin only you have relatives that did great stuff that you can ask god to bring that down your bloodline it, it's in you come example on example is they took a heart of a guy a guy got a heart transplant and it was a chinese guy heart this guy was like from the south you know like hillbilly kind of guy he suddenly understands and speaks perfect mandarin wow because the in the bloodline Wow. It, it, it gets so if it's you can, the memory and then you liberate not just the memory of, of your bloodline when you take communion the memory of jesus blood of his resurrection yeah well. you put the two together you release wealth from your generational bloodline yeah you release uh gifts callings influence talents that were lost I, I experimented on my own body one time and my dad's side were jewish from austria yeah, uh -huh. and, you know they were like hundreds of years ago nazis came you know killed the great-grandfather i went back over there prayed over the apartment so that i liberate my bloodline to break every curse and i liberate all the blessings he knew like 12 languages he had a, a newspaper for diplomats he was a scientist he wrote scientific books like yeah, I, right. probably knew einstein wow i get up in the morning a few weeks later and i'm getting equations of time travel i'm understanding it i'm picking up russian <laughs> i'm picking up german I'm, i start with this app and i couldn't pick it up before easily yeah and suddenly my brain is picking up uh, you know, scientific stuff, wow. uh, uh, um, um, understanding of even of finances, and that's what they were. And wow. I said, Lord, I liberate the, what the, the blessings you gave them, even if they weren't saved. I think you're onto something here because most of us just go around and we and we do just, you know, command the curses to be broken. Yeah. So that's great, right? But why not? We, I mean, think of there are lineages and our ancestors had many, many gifts and talents. Exactly. That, I mean, we need to take a hold of what is ours. Exactly. So let's minister to the people right now. All right, do it. Okay. Um, Father, we thank you right now that as we move into this, that you are going to go back on the sundial of their Ahaz. Father, I decree it right now. I step into the court of heaven right now, and from that glory realm in heaven, I decree that the, that the scrolls of your life are being brought forth to search the scrolls for all of the altars that were erected in your bloodline that brought curses or anything else and all of the blessings as David is saying so that they can be brought forth into your bloodline. So we decree that the sunlight is going back 10 steps on the sundial of your ancestors right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask Lord by the power of your blood and the power of the cross which ripped the curtain from the top which is the glory realm to the bottom which is this realm of linear time that it would be enacted right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we're searching out every evil altar that was erected to idols or any other demonic spirit that is causing everyone that's watching right now issues in their health, issues with their finances, with their marriage, in, in their business, in their education, or any other area in their life right now. Father, we ask that the scrolls would be read and the, and the officers of the court would, would search those scrolls for every single time that those altars were erected, place that they're erected, and cause that made them erected. The cause of every curse, the cause of every sin, the cause of what they're suffering right now. In the name of Jesus, we stretch forth our hand. That's what Peter said. He said, now, Lord, stretch forth your hand to do signs and wonders through us. Through us. That's Ectano. He, Peter was saying, Lord, do miracles through us by going back in time, back to the place it happened, the time it happened, and the cause that made it happen. We decree we're doing that right now in the name of Jesus right now. And we're putting the blood of Jesus on that right now. We call it forth right now. That everything that people are dealing with right now that is, that is, that is active and having authority in their lives because of the, something in the past be completely pulled up at the root. At the root, at the time it happened, the place it happened, and the cause that made it happen in Jesus' name right now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go Amen. ahead. Go ahead. So, Lord, I pray for those that are watching right now. She just broke off all the roots. She broke off all the curses. And I liberate also the generational blessings, mm. relatives, you, wealth Lord. that was lost mm. in your family line. Thank you, Jesus. Influence that was lost, curses broken, you, and then, ret uh, what do you call it? Not retribution. Ret retroactive? But 
retroactive blessings yep. multiply Jesus. back on you. Maybe you lost loved ones. Maybe you lost friendships that God restores that back to you. Peter said, what do we get? Lord, we gave everything for you. We sacrifice everything. He says a hundredfold in this life and the age to come. So I pray, Father God, even properties that were lost, even even those, if you're, I see African Americans that are here, you were taken from Africa, brought over here, lost your family line, lost your wealth. God can restore that back to you. Native Americans, God can restore that back to you. Thank you, uh, Lord. A European descent that came on the Mayflower and those who came after to a new world because of the persecution in Europe and in England, and they lost everything. God can restore what was lost in your bloodline, a Jewish people, Asian, whatever you are, whatever your background is, God wants to restore things that were lost in your bloodline, abilities in your in your mind and in, in your influence and in your body that you don't seem to have now, but are like in your body, ready to be activated, where suddenly you know how to do things you never knew before. Mm, wow. You know how to Come operate on. things. I read a, th a thing where these Ooh, scientists Jesus. cloned a dog, and, the, and the, they loved this little dog at the lab, and he died. They cloned him, Jesus. and the clone of the dog knew all the tricks and the trails wow. of the original dog without wow. teaching him anything. Wow. So there, it, it, so there was bloodlines that were passed down and memories. So like there's sin memories. Like you said, I don't know why I have anger like my father and my uncle, uh, or maybe you have a lust issue, and maybe in your family line they all were divorced. They all had several, you know, uh, cheated on their wives or, or, or financial p curses all the way down the line, poverty, bankruptcy, foreclosure, like like it seems like a pattern. So you, you break the pattern, but then you liberate the blessings on whatever seems to be a recurring pattern of sickness. If someone has dementia and your grandmother had dementia and your great grandfather had dementia, then you break it and then you claim, I'm going to be like Daniel. I'm going to have 10 times more higher IQ, way more, Whoa. not just, not, just not having the sickness. I'm going to go beyond and get payback for what the enemy did. You can also demand the enemy pay back seven times for what you lost. So you don't just get back what you lost. You lost all that time to enjoy that stuff. You lost all the influence. So get seven times more payback. The Israelites were 500 years did not get paid in Egypt, worked their butt off. And not only did they get out, that, that's like breaking the generational curses. They got it with the gold and the silver. The wealth of Egypt was given to them as they went out. So you don't want to just get out of your curse. You want, you need payback. <laughs> it's like when you go to court, they say, oh, you stole from this guy for 10 years. You owe that plus this for the time and the effects or the emotional hurt that this person went through. God wants to do that to you. And that's a whole nother subject on the court of heaven. You can get that stuff back as well. You can use courts of heaven as well to get back right what was lost, right not just get set free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now. Wow. Thank you, God. I received that. If you received that, guys. Type in on the chat, I receive it. I receive the breaking of the curses and the release of the blessings in the name of Jesus. I'm receiving it right now. Ooh, because, yeah, I can feel the glory. man, yeah, like, like, wow, like there's so many Revelation. things that I want to do that actually burn in my heart. Hmm. And it, probably there's a burning in my heart because I have the right to have it, but I've never actually pulled it into my now. Yeah. So I pull it Usually when you feel now. this holy frustration where yeah, right. I know I should be doing this or yeah. something much more than doing now, yeah. and you feel frustrated. It's because deep down inside, you know you're called to do that. Right. Like I used to watch, before I did this stuff, I was just living on the mission field, but I was, wa I come back to the States, turn on TV, and I watch like Bonky doing his crusades or bending yeah. in, and I started crying. I wow. didn't know why I was crying. I was like, oh, my wife said, why are you crying? I said, I don't know, something deep in me is resonating because I'm supposed wow. to be doing that. Come on. And I'm not, I wasn't even doing that kind of ministry at the time, but I was like, oh, I was just feeling such a, a burden and a, wow. and a weep. I would just weep when I looked at it. And I realized, oh my God, or my wife would watch a superhero movie, yeah. like Fantastic Five or something crazy. Yeah. And then she would weep in the middle of the, it's like a, a movie, right? I like, I said, honey, why are you crying? She goes, because we're called to do that. Yeah. The world's trying to mimic what we're, yes. su the supernatural abilities. Yes. She would weep because she knows. So like your your body groans, the earth groans yes. for the manifestation wow. of, the, of the, the fullness of the sons of God. Absolutely. So that's what you're and feeling. And the earth is groaning and, and we are made of earth too. So we are groaning. Yeah. You know, I'm working on a teaching right now. We won't go into it. It's called superhuman. But honestly, we are. And we need to start walking in the fullness of everything we really have. That exactly. Jesus is one for us. Redeem the time. Redeem the time. Look, guys, I don't know. I'm probably going to throw a loop at my little at my little <laughs> millennials over there, but um, we don't. Uh, they hopefully can get a graphic made. It's called uh, "In the Midst." Not the, we were going to do something else, but. I have a teaching called In the Midst. It's all about traveling through time and space. All about traveling through time and space. They're going to put the graphic up for you. It's amazing. You need to go to katiesouza.com and get it. And this just a little bit of teaching is is just something that it's just the tip of the iceberg. And now put up the graphic, uh, guys, for um, David's book. David's book, Unlimited Glory. Is that what we're? Yeah. Yeah. Unlimited no, Glory. No, I'm sorry. Limitless Glory. Limitless Glory. But it is unlimited, too. It is. Absolutely. <laughs> Limitless Glory, guys. Go to davidherzogstore.com and get it. 
It's totally amazing stuff. Look, you need to start operating in this. And there, there's so much scripture about it. Totally. So much it's scripture about it. all over the Bible. It. It's all over the Bible. You just, you just weren't taught that in Sunday school, but it's there. Right, exactly. Or you had those scriptures, but you didn't know it meant that. You know, whenever I work mental miracles, I've, I've been in your place and worked mental miracles before. Yeah. Okay, um, I always freeze time first. Yeah. Because there's something that happens when, when you command time to freeze, which is people will be like, well, there's that in the Bible. It's Joshua. Sun yeah. stands still in the midst yeah, of heaven, moon exactly. stay, right? Um, until Joshua took revenge on all his enemies. There's a demonic spirit behind the, the metal. And so when I do that, what happens is it not only gives me time, right, to kick that spirit off, but also time for the angels to come and take out that metal and put in a body part. That's good. You know, so I always say that first. And that's how I move in, into that realm. Huh, that's yeah. really good. How do, you, uh, how do you apply this when you're working miracles? So it depends. Like sometimes I'll do um, car accidents like I did last week or a few days ago. Seattle. Yeah. And how many people have car accidents? You're still not fully healed. You yeah. pray. You lay hands on it. You have other pray for you. But it's not. you're not getting the healing. So they come up. They raise their hands. And I go, Lord, I'm in the glory room. I go, now in the glory zone time. We go back in time to just before the accident. Yeah. What happens is when you have a fall or an impact... Uh, trauma comes to try to protect you or from the impact. So this trauma, this fear, this uh, uh, it, it covers, let's say, your knee or your your shoulder, and it tries to buffer it. And then what happens is it compartmentalizes it. So then you're praying for healing of that pain, but the trauma is invisible. It's covering that body part. Right. So you're like, how come the, it's not healing because it's not getting to the root? So I just go in the name of Jesus. Now I take that trauma, get off of the body. Yeah. We don't need you anymore in Jesus' name. Now the trauma's gone. Yep. Now the body is left wide open for healing. Now you can just go directly lay hands or declare. Yeah. And, and they wow. would almost every time, almost just pretty much everyone gets healed right there. Yeah. See, I, I so you go back in time and re, to before the accident. Yeah. I, then I'll say I clock it at that or froze it. I clock it from before. So you hold the body to before the accident when it was perfect. Then you tell the body to go back to that original state. Okay, so look. It's similar to what you're saying. I do the exact same thing. We just might have, you know, a little bit of different mechanisms. But... You know, uh, I do basically the exact same thing. Uh, um, and it says, okay, so I was in Seattle too. And I was activating into this truth. And the Lord told me there was a bunch of people in the room that had had, had accidents, right? And that I was supposed to go back in time mm -hmm. to the time the accident happened, the place it happened, and the cause that made it happen. Take the trauma off and command We're the similar. bones to move into place. <laughs> and so I said... Okay, then the Lord starts having me just go crack, 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 pop, 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 crack, 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 pop, pop, pop. And people in their seats, I have this on video. So, uh, I mean, I wish we had it prepared, but we, we can show it later. Um, people just start, they would be sitting in their seats and all of a sudden, out of the blue, their, their knee would go pop, pop, crack, and they'd be completely healed. Their spine, one lady said she's felt like eight pops, a pop, 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 pop. That's awesome. And her spine popped right into place. This stuff really works. And, you know, it's really cool how the man with the withered hand, when uh, Jesus was praying for him, and I don't know if it's in this version, but it says that he had a withered hand. Yeah, it does. It's Mark 3, verse 1 in the Amplified Classic. It says, Jesus went in the synagogue, and there was a man who had one withered hand as a result of an accident or a disease. Ah, that's good. This is what we do. This is what we do. It's yeah, we just go, we're going to go back to the accident that's, or the disease. That's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure but it works um i think that there's probably okay guys i want you to start chatting in right now have you had an accident or a disease and you have a bone issue there we go like your spine's not aligned uh your knee's injured you have pain in your hips um something's happened you know i had a lot of tmj miracles during that oh, yeah. meeting a lot of tmj I've miracles those, yeah. you know um maybe your shoulder and you're torn uh your rotator cuff or something like that. Start chatting that in now. Start chatting that in now. We're going to pray for you uh, towards the end of the broadcast. Now, before we do, let's show one more time the meeting. Let's do it. Because, yeah, Passover, the Passover glory event. Let's take a look at it. Look at this. Wow. Now, this is like the tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, get there, right? And it goes to the 17th. And talk about the speakers. Oh, the speakers are, there's one guy, he's really crazy. I like him a lot. I don't always agree with him, but I think he's amazing. His name is David Herzog, and he's a good friend of mine. I've had the privilege of having been in every single one of his meetings for the past 30 years. Even if I wanted to get out of it, I could never get out of being in his own meeting. 
I could never uh, like watch him on Zoom or you uh, stream. I had to go there. So uh, I've had I've learned a lot of his stuff, and we become very close. Yeah. And then also Stephanie Herzog, my yeah. favorite person in the world, my wife. Yeah. Awesome, glory, signs, wonders, joy. Yeah. yeah. Teaching realm, she's seer so awesome. realm. She's got it all. Yeah. And then we got Cindy Jacobs, who's like the a general of the prophets. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, you know, she's amazing. She's gonna really talk about what's happening and, in the planet. And last time she came, she prophesied over me. I'm getting a building very soon. Four months later, we own the building. Yeah, come so on. So I don't know what she's gonna say this wow. time. But she had works yeah. for a lot of different people. Well, tell her come prophesy over me. <laughs> there you go. Amen. And then Troy Brewer's coming, and he has the high level uh, understanding of the numbers, like what the year means, what the Hebrew means. Yeah, wow. And, and what, how does it all equal to what is happening on the earth right now and what we need to do? Yeah. And so you got to be there. Steve Swanson with awesome, crazy worship. Yeah. That's going to be crazy awesome as well. He's always a glory bringer. Every time I work with Steve, there's always big miracles. Yeah, Steve, he's my favorite worship leader to do meetings with. Yeah, look, you guys need to uh, tune in for even like the worship wow, because I mean, I had like a dead bone come back to life when I was working with Steve on the stage one time, wow. working miracles in the glory. I had a lady that had a metal plate in her neck disappear, proven by a metal detector. I had an, another lady, she had a one of her, her discs had popped out like this, and the bottom one underneath it had popped out, so it like this saddle horn wow. on the back of her spine. He, he brings a realm. When he, he brings a realm. Glo- Wait, one time we had it in Sedona. He wasn't. On, he was did the worship. Then he got off the keyboards. A speaker came in to speak, and angels started singing into the crowd. Wow! And he starts crying. He goes, "I'm not touching nothing." Wow! And, and we all audibly heard. Even new wow. angels were there. New angels got saved hearing it. Come on! They thought it was ET at first. He said, "No, it's the Holy oh Spirit." Gosh. Angels. Oh my gosh. Coming into wow. the audience, and he was like, "What's going on?" Yeah, so Steve is so powerful. So go, to, guys, and if you can't go in person, get on the thegloryzone.org, thegloryzone.org, and you can download a link, okay, and watch it. It's really good. And don't also forget uh, that in the midst, in the midst, get it, guys, in the midst, in the midst. That's our teaching on time travel. You're gonna love it. It's it's a revolutionary and breakthrough. Okay, so we're gonna start praying for people. Let's do it. Okay. Um, bones. Guys, you're chatting in. I see people are, yes, good. Tell of all me. the body parts, it's interesting that you chose bones. Okay. Because you never pray for people's bones or metals ever. So for this is the first time for you, I'm kidding. You yeah. always do. <laughs> I know, I was going to say, what? What? Okay, so thanks for chatting in because we're about to pray. If you have pain in your bones, you have misalignment in your spine, you have, you know, discs, we're, we're going to pray right now. Uh, do you want to open it up? Sure. Go ahead. Thank you. So those watching, you got pain in your bones, your body, ligaments, whatever it is, tissue. Lord, we go in the glory realm. We worship you. The realm is here. We go up in our heavenly seat. We're seated in heavenly places, and we decree and rule and reign by decree. Father, we're little kings unto the king of kings. And we decree and we declare to, that a time reversal over the body parts to before they had the problem. We command the trauma to come off from the day that it, they fell or had the accident. Trauma goes in Jesus' name. And we command the body to go back in time before the accident and clock it and freeze it at that moment when it was perfect, when there was nothing wrong with it. We command the body part to reverse time, go back in time, grow out, pain to leave, everything to be healed, bones, ligaments, tissues, nerves, everything to go back and reconnect to where they need to go. In the name of Jesus, Lord, stretch out your hand as an ax for, stretch out your hand to heal, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, and we go back to the time the accident or the disease happened, the place the accident yes. or disease happened, and the cause that was the reason for this accident or disease right now. And we speak to the trauma that happened in that in that place right now that wounded your soul and is preventing you from getting the total breakthrough the bible says that you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers so i speak to your soul right now and i and i declare declare that the trauma that came from that accident or that disease or the surgeries you had to go through or the procedures or the you know the the financial losses that you went through and and, and all of the traumatic events that sprung forth from that incident and i command your soul to be healed right now of all trauma right now in the name of jesus from, from that circumstance, from that stressor, from that incident, from that traumatic event right now, I release Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus, and I command your soul to prosper. I command you to become excellent of soul. I, I curse that trauma at the root, right there at the root, at the time it happened, the place it happened, the cause that made it happen right now. And I speak life and healing into your soul first in the name of Jesus right now. Now, I hear a crack in my mind right now. I command the bones to align right now. I 
freeze time, sun stands still in the midst of heaven, moon stay in the valley of Ashland, and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until Joshua took revenge on all his enemies. And I command your bones to align right now. I command new bone matter to grow. I command ligaments to be healed. I command muscles to be repaired. I command alignment in the spine, the neck, the back, the knees, the shoulders, the elbows, the joints, the ankles, the feet. In the name of Jesus right now, I command you, come into alignment now. Now, I speak creative miracles into this and I command you, be healed. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. And I speak to the demonic spirit that came upon you at that time. And I say, you come out. Come out. I loose them of that demonic spirit that's kept them bowed over like the woman bent over with the spirit of infirmity. I judge that spirit in the court of heaven right now and I command you to come out. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. In the name of Jesus, now, now. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Now check your body and try to do something you couldn't mm, do before. Yeah. And see what's going on now with it. A lot of times as you yep. test it and look, mm -hmm. it'll start to, to move quickly. Right. And, 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 and as you do that, guys, I want you to start chatting in. Did you have heat, energy, um, cold? Uh, did you hear the cracking? Did you... Have, as you stand up, uh, do you have more movement? Do you have less pain? And keep testing. Don't just try one time. I, I get irritated by that, David. I mean, uh, one guy, I was, he was wanting, I'd already seen a bunch of mental miracles happen. One lady had her collarbone move from being sticking up out here to in place. She came up and testified. And then he wanted me to pray for his metal. I, I had no problem. I, I started praying for him. And then I said, no, test. And he went, still there. And I went, no, no, test, test, really test. And he goes, no, nope, still hurts. I go, no, I really need you to like, you know, do this, do this to, you know, bend over, yeah. twist, move. He he would not. He goes, no, I still feel it. And I'm like. It's almost like they're trying to prove to you it doesn't work. I know. Hey, but Bible says, Elijah told the guy, look seven times. No, no cloud. Look again. Look again. Yeah, yeah. But, wow. but, but, it, but it's not just used to looking in an attitude, though, of faith yeah. versus looking with a bad attitude like, oh, I tried. It didn't work. Yeah, yeah. Did There's you... like a spirit behind it, like the way they say it. Yeah. You can tell their attitude. Another lady can say the same thing and say. Oh, no, not yet, but I, I believe it will very yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, right, right. No, it's no, not, and not, keep not, on not, trying. Not quite yet, but I, I really think it's coming. You know, like in faith. Yeah. But if someone just goes, no, it didn't work. Like, like there's a spirit, an attitude. Sometimes yeah. you can't have that attitude. You got to be like, no, I'm going to get this. Yeah, I just had a woman that had a massively, her, her arm, she tore the ligament. It popped out of the socket. Wow. And she had, it had been frozen like that for months. Well, I had a word of knowledge. I said, I didn't know that. I said, somebody here, your, your, your shoulder's getting healed. And I said, you got to test. And she sat there in it. it. I mean, it popped, it cracked, and finally it put it came wow. back into place. Wow. But she kept on testing because it still made a little noise. Yeah. She would not stop, and she got her healing. So, guys, do that. And chat in now. Be, as you're chatting in, we're running out of time. Okay, so tell me what happened. Let uh, David and I know. And right before we go, put up the Passover thing one more time. Don't forget, go to it. Go to it, April. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Woo, can't believe it's tomorrow. Yeah, I know. It almost feels like we're still in March. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing, right? It's amazing. <laughs> right? It's the Passover glory with David and Cindy Jacobs and Troy Brewer and Stephanie Herzog. Love her. Love her so much. I did too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, we knew that already. But <laughs> yeah, so go, guys, or you can get the link and also get David's book. Let's put that up. And uh, it's called Limitless Glory. Limitless Glory. But there might be a limit on how many books we have left, so get it quick. Uh, yeah, there you go, right? <laughs> DavidHerzogStore.com. Hurry up. Get it and get it fast. Okay, we got 30 seconds left. Just do you have uh, like a 10 second, 15 second closing remark? Go ahead. Uh, I'm David Herzog, and I approve this message. <laughs> No, I'm real excited to be here. I love this ministry. We love Katie. Keep praying for Katie. Katie has awesome things ahead for you. New beginnings. Thank you, Lord. New territories. Yes. It's going to happen, Katie. I believe We're excited it, and I receive you. it. I receive Keep it. Keep following this lady here. Uh, amen. Okay. You heard the man. Keep following. Okay. Don't forget to share this broadcast so people can watch the replay. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye. Sayonara.